Today I'm going to talk about the Jezebel narcissist who wears a Christian mask. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So the Bible basically talks about two types of women. One is the godly woman and the other is the ungodly woman. And there are two primary examples of this ungodly woman, both contained in the Old Testament. And the first one is Jezebel, which I like to say she had more of a overt narcissistic type, and Delilah, who had more of a covert narcissistic type personality. And I'm actually just going to handle the Jezebel type in this episode and I'll cover Delilah in another video. So we're going to begin in the book of Kings in the Old Testament and we're going to take a look at an account that deals with King Ahab who was king of Israel at the time. And the section that I want to read to you first is in uh, 1 Kings chapter 16 verses 30 and 31. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. That's a lot of evil. And as if it were not enough for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, he even married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and he then proceeded to serve and worship Baal. You see, King Ahab was more evil than anyone before him, including his extremely evil father, King Omri. And if that even wasn't enough, King Ahab chose out Jezebel to marry, and together they joined forces with their evil. And King Ahab served and worshiped pagan idols. And I want to bring out the point that King Ahab deliberately chose Jezebel. And you have to know he must have done his homework. And many times evil will want to join forces with evil. However, they're not always equal amounts of evil. So we're going to read in this account here just how they joined forces with the focus on Jezebel and her evil. So we're going to start by looking at some verses in the book of Kings that will bring out the characteristics of this Jezebel, but also a Jezebel, somebody with that type of Jezebel spirit who does nothing but brazen evil. And the first characteristics is she's a murderer. That's right. This Jezebel is so vicious and so fierce that they have the great potential and zero conscience to carry out murder. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, it says, For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Jezebel went ahead and slaughtered hundreds of God's prophets, prophets who were for the Lord. And that's the amount of evil within her. And that's why I share with you in all these, these videos is that you cannot cohabitate with a narcissist who's driven by those demonic forces and influences because you're talking about the darkness in the narcissist, the darkness in the Jezebel versus the light of the empath in you, the good person, the Christian. And so she even went as far as to murder and slaughter so many of God's prophets. Now, the next characteristic is that they are full of vicious threats. And in this case, again, her threat, Jezebel's threat in the record that I'm going to read to you was to murder yet another man of God. And in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And Elijah is the man of God. He's the prophet of the Lord. And how he had killed all the prophets 
And we're talking about the prophets of the pagan idols, the pagan god, uh, the pagan Baal god that these prophets represented and they were Jezebel's prophets and they were false prophets. So Elijah, instructed by God, slaughtered them. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so made the gods, and that's small g, the, the false gods, do to me and even more if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Do you hear that threat? She threatened by sending a messenger to Elijah to say, you know what? Come hell or high water, I'm going to do to you what you did to my prophets, those false prophets. And verse 3, and he, Elijah, was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. So Ahab, King Ahab, spilled the beans to Jezebel, his wicked wife, that this prophet of God, prophet of the Lord, Elijah, slaughtered 450 of her pagan worshiping prophets. And that really TO'd Jezebel, really ticked her off. So Jezebel threatened to do the same to Elijah. And you see the rage within the threat because she lost a lot, 450 of her flying monkeys and minions. And then in verse three, where it says, Elijah, he was afraid and he ran for his life. Now we're talking about a mighty man of God who knows that he has God Almighty on his side and he's doing the will of God, but yet he's also human and seeing just how wicked and evil that Jezebel was, he ran for his life. But you'll read later on in those chapters that God gave him strength and then gave him further guidance. And I want to encourage you to understand that for yourself too. After you've done, or maybe you're still dealing with the narcissist, God's going to give you strength. God's going to give you guidance as well because God is faithful and he is mighty. And the third characteristic of this Jezebel type of narcissist is that they demand total commitment and loyalty. And as long as you're, you're going along with them and doing their bidding, everything's going to be kind of level. However, the moment that you decide to do something different, uh, you go against their boundaries, you are maybe even revealing who they really are, that's when all hell lets loose. And the Jezebel is a very, very dangerous type of narcissist. And the fourth characteristic is the Jezebel narcissist loves to stir up evil, loves to stir up trouble, loves to stir up people's emotions, stir up problems, stir up all types of wreaking havoc everywhere that she goes. And she takes pleasure in that. And it says in 1 King chapter 21, verse 25, it says, But there was none like unto Ahab, in that he was so very, very evil, which did sell himself to work wickedness. It even says it here, not only was he evil on his own, he was the most evil. But then when he married Jezebel, who was most likely even more evil than him, their combined forces, he sold himself out to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, knowing this, stirred up. So you see double the evil. And that's what these Jezebel narcissists will do. They'll, they'll seek out not just the, the, the innocent, but they'll seek out other evil people to join forces with her to do even more evil and destruction and even death. 
So we see that the Jezebel narcissistic type, as described in these verses, is demonic, is vicious, has no holes barred. And that is actually comes from a wrestling term where whenever you have some type of competition, there are certain protocols that take place, but there are certain wrestling matches where it's called no holes barred. No matter what hold you want to get your opponent in, it's not barred, it's allowed. And also works endlessly to destroy for the end goal of winning. And you can see that throughout these records with dealing with Jezebel, very competitive, very vicious, very exact, very determined, very persistent, and works endlessly to carry out the evil. And God's word has a few things to say about this type of ungodly woman. And in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13, it says, The foolish woman is restless and noisy. She is naive and easily misled and thoughtless and knows nothing at all about external value. Because the, the Jezebel narcissist doesn't care about value. She, they, they, she only values herself. She is her own God. And she is going to carry out all of the vicious thoughts and intents of her evil black heart any way she pleases. No holes barred. And you can, when you see this type of, of narcissist, you truly, truly must look for the nearest exit and run. Because you cannot, especially the Jezebel narcissist, but even any narcissist, you, they do not want to be rehabilitated. They don't think they need help. You need help. That's how they look at it. You need help. And they just want to destroy you. And they'll use any means that they can, including, you know, just stealing everything, not only just your possessions and your money, but, but your, your honor, your dignity, your joy, your, your peace. They will steal everything because they are driven by evil and demonic forces. And in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19, it says, better to dwell in the wilderness. Now look, the wilderness, we don't live in the wilderness, right? We live in cities and we live maybe on, on the closest we can get to a wilderness, maybe a farm, a remote farm somewhere, but that's still not wilderness. Wilderness is where hungry, angry beasts that, that need to eat live, um, Insects, snakes, cold weather, uh, extreme heat perhaps, uh, no place to, to actually find shelter. So wilderness, that's a big word right there. It, but God's word is, is correlating this. It's better to dwell in the wilderness, right, than with a contentious and angry woman. That's the Jezebel narcissist. She is contentious and she is angry. She is easily outraged, enraged, and she is easily provoked because of her own lack of inner core or any type of values. She has no boundaries, nor does she respect your boundaries. This is a very devilish and very dangerous type of narcissist, the Jezebel narcissist. And in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 22, it says, As a ring of gold in a swine's snout, so is a beautiful woman who is without discretion. Her lack of character mocks her beauty. So you hear that, gentlemen? Do not fall for that external beauty because within lies daggers, lies danger, lies evil. So there are four top reasons for falling for a Jezebel narcissist type. And the first one is distinct really from the others. And that is if somebody is very evil, they're going to be happy, only too happy to partner up with that Jezebel narcissistic woman. And it doesn't matter 
what facade she carries it doesn't matter uh what she purports to do and, and and her goals and so on evil can smell out evil and many times they will actually join together to produce even more evil the second top reason is that you just lack wisdom and how do you get wisdom about this jezebel type person well the wisdom of God's word. That's where you want to look and study and immerse yourself in God's word because look, the word narcissism got coined somewhere around the early 1900s and it's a psychology term and it was based on Greek mythology where Narcissus, a young man, falls in love with his image and cannot pull himself away from looking at himself. However, the characteristics of the various types of what, what are termed narcissists today have been in the Bible for thousands of years. You must know that, you know, God has, has distinguished this type of person, toxic evil person in his word to reveal who and what they are so that we can be we can discern and we can we can spot these people and stay away from them and be protected and then the third reason you may fall prey to a jezebel narcissist woman is that you lack spiritual discernment and how do you get discernment there's two ways number one you cannot discern what what is a narcissist a jezebel if you don't understand again going back to god's word what god says these people how they act what they do and their evil intentions and then also when you're born again and you have holy spirit in you god can work within your spirit to help you discern and see and identify who's carrying that jezebel spirit who's carrying those demonic forces and influences and, and working their evil by way of those influences. And then the fourth top reason that someone may fall for the Jezebel narcissist is simply because of lack of self-restraint. Look, let's face it, they can be very alluring, uh, the very seductive, very, you know, they, they, they eyeball you and they size you up and down. They see where your sore spots are. They see where your weaknesses are. And they just play into all of that. But rest assured, like any love bombing, you're, once they get their hook or their claws in you, it's all hell is going to let loose. So you must understand that part of your self-restraint is going to to come from understanding that you you're in a spiritual battle it's spiritual warfare it, it's not you know flesh against flesh you know oh we have a few problems but we work them out there is no working anything out with a narcissist and especially a jezebel narcissist it's either her way or no way at all and you have to again be very careful because they can be extremely dangerous and how you get you build up your self-restraint is by building yourself in god's word and recognizing who you are in christ and that you deserve somebody just like you the empath the good person the christian you don't you don't that's not your realm to be in darkness to be in, surrounded by evil you want to be surrounded like god's word tells us to be surrounded by light by like-minded believers by goodness, kindness, gentleness, spiritual godly people. That's who you want to be around. You know, it says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And those four top reasons that I spoke about, at least the, the three, <laughs> um, is that once you get God's word, a knowledge of God's word, you are now strengthened. You will not be destroyed because you, knowledge is power. 
Spiritual knowledge is power. And when you recognize that you're dealing with a Jezebel narcissist, my motto again is going to be, once you know, you gotta go. That's right. Once you know you're with a demonically driven person who's out to get you, you could never stay with that person because you know who you are in Christ Jesus and you deserve the best. And for you gentlemen, again, looking for that, that true Christian woman, not a Jezebel narcissist wearing Christian mask who, you know, sits in churches, their church and takes selfies and then posts them on social media and says, oh, look, look what a good Christian I am. You know, going to church and hearing sermons, they're fantastic. However, that's no guarantee that you are not hiding behind a Christian mask. That's right. When we observe people, you know, going to church, getting all dressed up, and that's all wonderful and good, but it's their actions that truly will show you uh, what kind of per what kind of woman that is. That that it's not a Jezebel spirit with a Christian mask. And if you want to know the true characteristics of a godly woman, a Christian woman, you'll want to look for these. And it's in Proverbs chapter 31, starting with verse 10. And it's actually the last book in Proverbs. And if you read verse 10 through 31, you will read the most amazing verses that will describe to you what a true, godly, valuable, amazing woman that God calls the godly woman. And it says in Proverbs 31, 10, who can find a virtuous woman for her worth is far above rubies. And you deserve that. That's right. That's who you want to be partnered up with. And I wrote down a list of these characteristics that when you're done with this video, take a look at that those verses that I told you about. And here are some of the characteristics. The virtuous, godly Christian woman is, she has sincere love for God and she fears and respects the Lord. Now that word fear means respect. So she loves and respects the Lord, number one. She has a love for others. She has commitment. She has dedication. She's a hard worker. She's caring. She's selfless. She's humble. She is steadfast. She's honest. She has strength. She has honor. She has diligence. She is generous. She does good and not evil. She rises early. She's wise. She helps those in need. She's kind. She's trustworthy. She's fair. And she lets others praise her and not herself. Do you see the extreme contrast between the Jezebel narcissist and a true godly woman? Once you start getting really familiar with these characteristics, it becomes more and more evident and obvious. And that's the purpose of my channel here. It's not only to share with you the MO of the narcissist, but to also give you the enlightenment of the truth of God's word, which it says in John chapter eight, verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's right. Having your awakening by knowing the MO is fantastic. However, having your enlightenment with the truth of God's word is where it takes it to another level, a spiritual level where you can get that deep, inner, permanent healing within your lives. So leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you have any prayer requests or other verses you want to share, leave them down there as well. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button 
and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and do hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video and until next time walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.